It's May 25th, all day weekend, 2024. My accident was on uh, December 15th, 2021. So, uh, so it's what, two and a half years? Uh, well, 21, 22, 23, and I went, yeah, two and a half years. Um, it started with Lockjaw, um, February, 2022. Um, but in December, within less than 10 days, I went to the doctor after the accident and I, uh, insisted, well, during the visit, it, it just didn't occur to me. I forgot to ask the doctor for a CT scan because I was feeling thumping on my brain on the right side and uh he uh um so all of that started through my charts online because during my visit i forgot to ask him his examination was really very basic uh he couldn't determine anything uh so he gave me a clean bill of health but then i followed up and i requested that he uh do a ct scan because i was feeling thumping on my right side and I followed up and followed up, and he continued to deny me. Never did the CT scan. Fast forward February of 2022, a couple of months. Now, all of a sudden, I was getting locked jaw, and I was getting sort of like this swollen. It felt like my my jaw, like something was going on that it was secreting something, like like something like, like acidic or something. I, I wasn't tasting it, but it was like inside. It wasn't like in my saliva. And it just felt uh, really, really strange. And I was suffering from, um, I became lith very lethargic. Uh, so eventually for the, I got locked jaw and I started going to Dr. Lombach, um, who helped me with the locked jaw. The locked jaw stopped there, but then all of a sudden um, it turned into now I couldn't, I couldn't chew. And that was like since March of 2022, I have not been chewing properly. And it's 2024 already, past March, more than two years already. We're already in May. Um, I had to get used to chewing with my tongue and chewing with the teeth that do touch. So it's sort of like a quarter type of chew. I could chew a quarter of the way. And you see? I don't have a bite. You see that gap? How do you think so, somebody like me could chew when there's no bite? So I can't chew things like rice. Um, I just swallow the rice. Um, I can't chew lettuce. I can't have salads because see, salad is too thin. It's paper thin. So my teeth cannot crush it any longer. This is not my original bite. You can look at my records with uh, my long-term time um, dentist, uh, Dr. Scherer in New Jersey. He has all, he knows I never had grinding issues. I never had a bite. Uh, now, uh, Dr. Hayes, uh, my dentist says that I'm grinding and I, I really need to start wearing these because I had stopped temporarily. And then all of a sudden he could actually witness that I was grinding and they were very, very nervous about me and uh, wrote on the report that I have TMJ. So I put this, these are things I ordered on. I don't have a doctor's prescription for guards, okay? Um, because my, my, my problem is in the front, see? I'm overbiting in the front. Typically, when people have TMJ, is in the back, so the mouth guards are different. There's, it's a different name. So I haven't seen a doctor that will give me this. But when I saw Dr. Storm, who was a ma ma malefa malef whatever, malefacial, whatever, uh, surgeon, he said, uh, he, he looked at the MRI and he said, I think you think your issue is really muscular. And he sent me for therapy. So I went for therapy. Okay. Uh, that was like 2020 two but like in august and if i really if it was muscular i would have started healing already with all the exercise and the therapy that i've done at home and that the therapist prescribed to me i also went for therapy for my neck 
and then I went for therapy for my back because I was having sciatica pain. All of this as a result of the accident. Um, so I just went for teeth cleaning and uh, my new dentist, because he's a lot closer to me, uh, I forget what his name is, but um, in Mount Pocono, he really was shocked when I opened my mouth and he said something's wrong. I told him, well, I don't bite. And when I sleep, I have to sleep with a pillow um, around my neck, you know, sort of like a travel pillow. I would put it around my neck every night since the accident. And I have to sleep up facing up. If I turn like this, it could hurt my neck, but also my jaw was like this for a while. And if you look at my driver's license that I took the picture, I think earlier this year, you could see that that the jaw was still a little crooked. It was like this. So my bite was even worse because it wasn't just up and down. It was sideways also. Okay. Uh, so I can't sleep like this because my jaw becomes disaligned like this. Uh, I can't even turn for more than five minutes. But now my back also, I can't turn sideways. I, I cannot you know, I, I'm alone, I'm single, but if I were married, I would not be able to spoon. I would not be able to cuddle. Um, I cannot sleep on my side. I cannot turn to my side, barely to even reach for something because I may pay a serious penalty for, for, for months in that. And this is what's happening now. I'm on a temporary disability from work. Uh, I have finally found a job, by the way. I was without a job for like a year and a half. I don't know how I survived. I survived on, on borrowed money. Uh, you can look at my W-2 records. I hardly worked. Um, I had no strength. Uh, by the way, Dr. Simeon, my second chiropractor that I haven't mentioned, uh, so that was very fatigued. And he, he now they call it Chinese medicine, but uh, um, he was right. He caught it right. He nipped it. He said, it seems like you have Epstein-Barr. And believe it or not, not he says it's, it's, it's not like medical information. He said, but... I've experienced a lot of my patients that after an accident, all of a sudden they're fatigued. He says, I really believe Epstein-Barr that's already in your system kicks in when you have trauma. And that's the same version, by the way, that wordish verbiage that my recent dentist brought up, by the way, when he sent me back to a malefactual doctor, surgeon, although I had one back in 22 uh, August 2022 only saw him once he sent me to therapy uh this doctor by the way told me I need to go back and they need to do a CT panoramic uh CT x-ray um which includes a panoramic x-ray uh he he insisted because he he said that Dr. Storm uh, made his decision without an x-ray and the x-ray is what really says if I have something broken. He really believes that my jaw is broken. Well, it's probably over here. This is where the MRI picks something up. He really believes that. And so I still don't have I, I, panoramic x-rays that I took with when Liberty sent me, my insurance carrier sent me to Dr. Donor. Uh, it wasn't part of the, the plan, I think, for him to take x-rays of me, but he had all the equipment. He did the panoramic x-rays. Again, the deal was that he sent me a copy. I gave him my email. He never sent it. Never, ever. Then I started following up. I was like, what's going on? Because the same day I had, the next day I had an appointment with Dr. Storm. So Dr. Storm would have prescribed it, but he didn't because I told him I just took him yesterday and the guy was nice and he's going to send me a copy. Well, lo and behold, he claims that I have TMJ from some other place and there's no record to, to prove that I ever had TMJ or even um, uh, uh, the grinding of the teeth, which he claims that uh, Dr. Laumbach's um, initial visit interview indicated that I did. There's no way that I had it. Probably, uh, I told her probably that I used to bite my inner cheek. Uh, but that was used to, that was way back in like in the year 2000. I, I, that hasn't happened since at least, you know, like what, 24 years. So he tries to say that the word that the wordish that she used was that I grind my teeth. Well, you could look at Dr. Scherer's, my dentist's, uh, records who dates back to the nineties. I never grinded my teeth. 
And um, so whatever verbiage she used, uh, he probably tried to twist it and say that I grinded my teeth. No, I never grinded my teeth. Okay. Um, and I know I'm jumping back and forth with all of this stuff. Uh, so now I got to go back to Malefaxio to see if they could give me um, the, the surgeon only for x-rays. Uh, unless I can see a dentist because a dentist, a regular dentist cannot uh, prescribe that. Uh uh, who knows? Maybe maybe I should ask him if he could. I'm, I'm going to call his office uh, because something is broken. Um, if it were muscular by now, uh, two and a half years later, I should be able to have my bike back. And I don't. Okay. I have no bike. I'm chewing with the front of my teeth and my teeth are going bad. I'm, uh, I pray if I wouldn't sleep with this, my front teeth would have cracked by now. OK, so I put this in. I ordered this from Amazon. I don't have a prescription. Because, again, it's a different type of prescription when you have TMJ from the back. I have it from the front, meaning the misalignment. Don't get it, don't get me, get it twisted, okay? I'm just saying the misalignment is affecting me. So, I took one of these and I cut into pieces because it's miserable sleeping with this. Okay, I've been sleeping with this for like two years. I got these other three pieces. I cut into two pieces. And sometimes I give my mouth a break and I, I'll do... Okay. Wow. See, so I have it on the sides because it keeps me from clashing in. And somehow my nerves won't go like this when I'm sleeping like this. My mouth opens, right? It won't go like this. Like it shuts itself abruptly and it could crack my teeth in the front. My, my dentist thought, he, he was alarmed when he heard that. He says, you need to get x-rays. It was only two months ago and this is going on for years. Okay, so I use this, oh, I cut it and I put it in the front like this, like a sleeve like this. So it would protect my teeth, but it's miserable sleeping with any, any and all of this stuff. So this is my little night thing here, cuppy with vinegar, so I could dump everything here. And at night, I'll just pick it up and scoop it and put it in my mouth. And this is the way I'm living. I have to, I have another video that I'm sharing where I sleep facing up. Again, as I mentioned, with a travel pillow holding my neck like this, I have to, and it holds me like, for keeps me from going like this, and it keeps me like this. But I also need something in my mouth because my mouth could still clamp up and break each other's teeth. Okay. Uh, and so, uh, and then also my back. I cannot cuddle, I cannot turn to my side because I'm suffering now from sciatica and also S. S SI joint. Okay. So now my specialist, the surgeon that saw me for the SI joint, uh, he says, I don't have sciatica, but I have sciatica too. He doesn't know me from before because it runs, it has run down my leg. I have both SI joint and sciatica. And my other doctor says that it's sciatica. Um, regardless, it's bad enough just to have one or the other. Uh, I have been limping from time to time. I don't, I don't walk with a, with a cane. But sometimes the sciatica is so bad. Uh, one time I rushed to, to the doctor um, uh, in St. Luke's, uh, Dr. Vera. She's a nurse practitioner, but she's a PhD, probably a PhD. She's really great. And uh, for the first time in my life, my my uh, blood work came up with high blood pressure. And so I, I provided that in the charts to my attorney. And also when I went to see the neurosurgeon, um, uh, who said I had SI, SI joint. He did a few tests and, um, physical only, you know, and, uh, so sometimes I'm so tired and I, I'm, my life has changed. I don't have the energy I used to. I, I can't work out, uh, because I'll injure myself. Um, I, I was going to, uh, thank God for Planet Fitness because, uh, when I started improving, when I was seeing Dr. Um, Simeon, uh, it was because I was go I was improving because I was going there and using the three um, massage machines. I, I was burning them out. Those machines were breaking. <laughs> I felt responsible for burning out. I mean, I was doing two of each machine, two of the water uh, massager and then two of the, the chair. So I was going from before. And that was part of my therapy 
that I invented. And then uh, Dr. Simeon was really pleased that I was doing better and I was doing his exercises. Uh, but still, it always came back. Um, the pain, the, the lower back issue came back. But it's affected my upper posture. I got forward head, uh, a forward head posture where you start growing a lump over here. Um, and I think I, I kind of feel something like a lump. I wonder, I hope it's gone. Um, oh my goodness. I got to do more and more exercises, but I'm lethargic. I'm always, I spend my life here in this, see this rocker. This is my recliner. Okay. Um, and so I finally got a job in September of 2023, uh, uh, up until like right on my sixth month. Thank God I had this short term disability. I actually, I had injured myself like the first week, um, I couldn't get up. I was like, uh, I remember I was, uh, I, I was, I felt like paralyzed from my waist down. I couldn't get up. Um, I had to grab, uh, I had to force myself up and I was afraid that my back will break in, in half. Uh, I felt that my back was not connected at all. Anyway. Um, so through some miracle, I, 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 I have stuff at home that helps me really, really good stuff that I've bought to help heal other people. And, um, and so I use this machine to help me and I'll stretch it. Uh, I was, uh, kind of like doing, um, oh my goodness, what's the word? Uh, just trying to, I was pulling. Okay. Let me show you. Where's the thing? Give me a second here. Okay. So I, this thing here helps me pull, pull my back decompression. That's what it is. It helps me do a decompression. Okay. Um, and there's another machine that I have that I bought from my brother when he had a bad back. Uh, he, he didn't figure it out. Uh, but, um, it helps me also that day when I felt like my, my back snapped. Um, it really did. Uh, I, I actually had that thing handy and I started doing the circular thing and I could feel the bone, like the coccyx, like, like it was separate and it actually helped me manage and I was able uh, to work then. So now then uh, fast forward to six months later on the job, I, I'm, I'm sitting, you know, a lot, right? Um, for eight hours a day. So all of a sudden one morning I got up and the same thing happened. I, I couldn't get up. I needed something like, um, like, uh, a cane and I sleep with the cane ever since the first episode, I sleep with the cane by my bed because I grab it because it has rubber on the bottom. I could lean on it, even though it's not straight up and get up. And so I got up, but I'm like, it's happening again. And so I sent a text to my manager and I told her I can't make it day two. Same thing. I told her I can't make it. Day three, I told her I still can't make it. I think I ran out of sick days because only six months I'm at the job. So um, I don't know. In the back of my head, I think I knew I had disability. So I got on the work computer and I, I wrote to HR. And I didn't know. I wasn't sure if I did, but I'm really, really good in picking insurance. So <laughs> I think I, 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 I knew because of that. Um, so I told him I can't go to work and I started documenting things and I applied for my short term disability. Thank God that I love my to buy insurance because, um, it's something that I'm very familiar with anyway. Um, so, uh, I'm here three months later. Now it has to be renewed. Uh, for June 1st, uh, they do a review and I, I'm still not ready to go. I cannot. I have to sit on this recliner and I have to recline it all the way back like this. Like this. Okay, this is how I spend my day. You see my work computer right there? It's for U.S. Bank. Okay. So I have to sit sit like that because if I sit up like this, I'm putting pressure on on my back. And now I'm able to do it. You know, I could only sit up for about 45 minutes. Um, uh, I'm getting better at sitting like this more than before three months ago. Uh, but I, I don't see how I'm ever going to be able to sit up again for probably more than an hour. If I go past an hour, it's a lot. Um, and if I do, because the other day I, I had to do something, 
And after that hour, uh, it's either the pain kicks in or fatigue. I don't know why. I don't see how it correlates. Um, I also know that ever since I started getting pain, by the way, um, uh, my blood pressure has gone up. So I provided those records to the doctor. Uh, now all of a sudden I, I have hypertension all the time. Uh, I, I have to take valerian root and, uh, sometimes chamomile or linden tea. I'm into herbs and that's how I've been surviving. So, uh, I have hypertension all the time before I couldn't drink caffeine. So I could only drink decaf. Now this is before the accident. And now, um, uh, I cannot drink. I can't even drink decaf. I, I try to cheat. Oh, when I had some decaf Dunkin' Donuts the other day, I just, I, I like the taste of coffee. I don't want it for the energy. Caffeine is really bad for me. Um, I can't even drink decaf now. Uh, when I went to my latest doctor, because I, Obamacare would not, uh, uh, my, my current then doctor, uh, w did not have the plans that Obamacare offers, okay, which is and better also called wellness, okay. So now I have to switch to Lehigh Valley. So basically, when I have a new doctor, it has to do a lot with who's covering me and who they're with. So uh, I went to um, now I went to uh, Lehigh Valley, and so the new doctor takes my blood pressure. And he says, "How come you have such hot, tremendously high blood pressure?" Because they did a, a whole long test because it was not normal. And I told him it must be because I'm in pain. Because last time when I had sciatica that I rushed to the doctor, it was the same thing. My blood pressure was up and I provided those tests to my doctors, by, to, to my attorney, by the way. So now the high blood pressure can, is persisting throughout the day. It's not only because I have inflammation uh, so now it's not only when I have pain, it's also when I don't, when I don't have pain, cause I don't have pain 24 seven. Uh, if I, if I do the things right, if I don't turn on the bed when I'm in bed, um, and I sleep like a dead person facing up, I won't have a bad day. But if I dare to even reach over for something on my side, I'm going to have a very bad day. And forget about sleeping on my side at all. I have to position myself in a way that I do not turn over. I have to discipline myself, even in my sleep, because I would not be sitting here. I would not be able to get up if I dare to turn over in the middle of the night, even to reach for something. It's very serious. Okay, so um, where was I? Uh, let's see. Whew. All that, okay? So the reason why I'm not in pain is because I've disciplined myself to avoid doing certain things. So what does that mean? That if I'm working, sitting up eight hours, which I cannot do, I, I cannot go past. If I could go back past a little bit more than 45 minutes, it's a lot, okay? Uh, so when you're working, you're reaching for this screen, you're reaching for that screen, you're reaching for the middle screen, you're leaning over, you're doing all these things subconsciously. You get up and you have half your butt on the seat while you're reaching over the other side, you're reaching like that. Uh, as you can see, you saw how I have my desk set up, right? And I have a high chair there and I have another chair that's even higher. Okay. I try to stand up uh and alternate but subconsciously when you're talking with a customer on the phone you start doing things that you hurt yourself and that's why i got up that morning where i couldn't even sit uh so i'm in pretty bad shape um but i gotta keep my chin up and uh i i, I can't i don't dare to work out i don't you know there's a lot of things i don't dare to do i'm getting out of shape i believe in doing exercise um uh, so this is my best friend here right now. So I need to order another recliner cause this one's already breaking and it, I'm only using it for three months. Uh, so I need another recliner and I got to get rid of my furniture cause what I need is a recliner, 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 and I need a backup recliner in case this one breaks. And if I have another one, if that breaks, I can have somebody fix it and use this one while it's fixed. It's just crazy. Okay, I live on this darn recliner and um, if 
I didn't have the recliner, if I didn't figure out what to do and how to take care of myself, I probably wouldn't be able to walk. Definitely wouldn't be able to leave the house, much less to go uh, going out and shopping for myself, which is amazing that I'm doing that now. OK, it's not because I'm getting better. It's because psychologically I've set myself up to not do a lot of things so that way I don't injure myself. So that way I can take care of myself and run my errands. And by the way, when I do things at home, um, I take breaks. OK, and by the way, I need to get water. I am dehydrated. I also always get dehydrated very, very easily. Since since the accident, I've always been a water drinker. But now it's different. It's like I really get dehydrated. It has to do with the jaw that this used to lock up and it, it's not healed. Um, I, I cannot do upper body exercise because I tried it the other day with this handheld thing. And this thing started swelling again just like it used to when I got jaw lock. And if I dare to do that exercise again because that's what triggered it. That's what triggered it. Okay, if I do that exercise, it's just an arm exercise. It's going to trigger it again. I'm going to start locking jaw again. So it's not going to be only that I cannot. Let me try to look at the screen instead of. It looks like I'm not looking at the screen. Anyway, I will get jaw lock again. Um, so I have a list of don't do things that is helping me survive. If I cross the line and I do any of these things, I'm going to be in trouble. Either I'm going to be limping, either I'm going to be confined to to just um, this recliner, or it could be so bad that I'll be paralyzed in bed. And I force myself up. Like, I, I will not take it. And I really took a big chance. I really thought my, my back was snapped. But I, I, I leaned, I, I, I tried like for like two hours to get up. And I couldn't, it's like I couldn't move uh, my body waist down. All right. Um, you got to see it to believe it. What can I say? Uh, so this is why I'm able to take care of myself because I have a long list of things that I'm not to do. Let's see if I can look at the screen that I, I cannot do. And if I dare to do it, like even just toss into my, my bed or try to do an upper body exercise, this thing swells up, and I will get lock, jaw, jaw lock, because that's, from my experience, that's how I got jaw lock the first time. Uh, and I told my doctor the first time, something in the right right area, I need a, a CT scan. And I also got the MRI, which caught something on the right side. Now I really want to get the panoramic x-ray. Uh, by the way, Dr. Donor, who is a doctor that Liberty Mutual sent me to, uh, to determine if he, they will give me the Deemer, which they blatantly lie. You should see that report. It's like fallacy after fallacy after fallacy. What a big liar. He said, I can't have TMJ unless I would have smacked myself in the car. <laughs> Everybody has TMJ smacks themselves against something hard, and that's how they get TMJ. What I think is that he could see in that x-ray that I have something disconnected here. Because how? why would he say that? But he used that as an excuse to, to indicate to tr claim that I had TMJ before. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, you think I've been living like this? Seriously? But anyway, uh, this is my testimony and I thought I'd share all of this. I hope I'm not leaving anything out. Um, uh, I, I, again, I had a lot of, I suffer from a lot of, uh, I was very lethargic. Um, Sim Dr. Simeon told me I probably had Epstein-Barr. I need to get that test also. He says he, he believes that it triggers it. And of course, everybody's going to laugh at that because it's like they call it Chinese medicine. That's what Dr. Storm called it. But no, it makes sense. It makes sense. He wanted me to take that blood test for the Epstein bar. And I got to see if I could ask my, my doctor finally to, you know, I've, it's, I've been too distracted. Um, my brain uh, is just too busy trying to take care of myself that I keep missing a lot of things. But I think I'm doing a good job in giving a lot of things to my attorney. I thank God for my attorney, my doctors. Um, Dr. Vera did put in the report that um, uh, I'm suffering, that I'm at the brink of my, my spirit is breaking, uh, very at risk of spirit breaking is what she said, which shocked me. I wasn't really much of a compliment to me because I'm a, I guess I got a little pride there. Uh, she also said I was paranoid. <laughs> uh, and it's true. I don't want to drive to like uh, to, to, to Jersey. I don't want long drives anymore because of the accident, like anything could happen. Um, and, um, 
so all of that I provided to my attorney as well. Um, the hypertension has gotten worse. Uh, I could feel something right here, right now, right here. I got to drink, uh, Valerian Reed. I'm not into medication. Sorry, but you know, that's just not, I'm not going to do that because then I'm going to get more side effects and I don't need that. I need to go up and get, get better, not down. I want to heal myself, but, um, quite frankly, I got to avoid a dual, doing a list of things and I don't think they're going to change. Um, so thank you for watching. I hope I didn't leave anything out. Um, again, Dr. Vera did say that uh, I was paranoid, which is not a compliment. Uh, but this is all as a result of the accident. And she said, my spirit is breaking. Um, all my dentists, nobody's saying, arguing that I don't have TMJ. Uh, Dr. Donor, who it represents, um, Liberty, Liberty doesn't want to give me my Deemer. He refuses to even give me a copy of my panoramic x-ray. Is that not something? And, and then when I called him for it, uh, he said, well, I usually get rid of that. I throw it out. That stuff doesn't stay in my office. I mean, he doesn't want to give me. Why? Because they know that that Deemer is going to have to cover probably uh, surgery to fix the broken jaw, which quite frankly, I don't want surgery. I'm not going to do surgery. I'm not, I don't want medication. I'll just, I just don't want surgery because I've heard things that surgery have, when, 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 um, TMJ surgery happens, they have been very bad reports where you get worse and it really, it disfigures even your face. So I'm not going there. I'm too old to go there. Uh, I'll just see if I could heal naturally. Um, there is a, a, a dentist, a TMJ dentist that doesn't do surgery and she doesn't do the guards, the mouth guards. She has a different technique. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I can't sit up for more than 40, uh, 45 minutes an hour. So I don't know how I'm going to drive there. If even somebody takes me, uh, it'll have to be in a van and we, we put a bed in the back. Um, I don't know who's, I don't have anybody to really do that for me. Uh, but that's the only way, unless I want to fly. And if I fly, I have to sit for, for more than 45 minutes. Um... And it's going to be crazy at the airport. Uh, it's got to be a direct flight because, it's, you know, um, I, I, I can't I can't risk being without a recliner. OK, it's the truth. Uh, so and I'm, they're not going to give me first class seat. That's for sure. <laughs> but anyway, there is a doctor. I've done a lot of research uh, and that's where I want to get the panoramic x-ray. Uh, and I don't know how I'm going to get there. Uh, but. I, I believe that she had the technique. I have YouTube videos that I have to look at. I just don't have the energy anymore to be looking for that. Um, I, cause I'm, 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 whenever I have energy to do something is something very important. Pull that out and back to the recliner. <laughs> I'm spending most of my, my, as much time as possible at the recliner. Um, and, 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 uh, when I'm cooking, I'm taking, if I'm cooking for myself, I'm taking breaks. Like I'll put it on low so I don't have to get up and watch it and turn it. Um, and then I got to put a, a reminder because I could easily fall asleep here because I still am lethargic. Uh, I also have hypertension on top of that. Uh, or, or pain is like one thing or the other always as a dynamic. Uh, fortunate because I'm disciplined in not doing certain things that will cripple me. I can go shopping, but just so you know, when I come back from shopping, it's like I went out, like I, like I went mountain climbing. I come back so tired, so exhausted. Um, it is like a full day for me. Like the day I could only do it. Like, uh, I'll do it once a week, once every two weeks. I try to stretch it when I run out of milk. Um, I'll go, but it feels like, like, I had a huge workout and I'm extremely tired when I get home. Okay. So, um, that's not, uh, not, 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 not I'm, I'm not, uh, even including the pain if I get some, uh, the pain or if I get lethargic or I get hypertension for sure. Um, so uh, I'm on my own meds. I'm on my own herbs. Okay, so thank you for watching. I think I'm done now. Sorry for the long uh, video, but it's, I mean, 30, less than 35 minutes. That's not bad. Have a great day. This is Felicita Carino. Uh, my ID, I'm 6122 Boardwalk Drive, Toby Hanna, Pennsylvania, date of birth, 1231-1961. And my social, the last four is 3765. Have a great day. Bye now.
it's not stopping. 